There are few natural wonders in America as spectacular as Bridal Veil Falls in Provo Canyon, Utah. Rushing waters drop 2,000 feet on the face of Cascade Mountain. But as one family discovered on the afternoon of May 31st, 1993, it's an area where it's easy to be deceived by nature's beauty. Thousands and thousands of guests visit Bridal Veil Falls during the summer months each year. Unfortunately, because of the steep terrain, it is a very, very dangerous area. And Bridal Falls does claim lives every year. This was the first time Kim Pierce and her family had come to the park. We hiked up to the falls and we just kind of sat around and rested there, played in the water some and checked out the sides. My daughter, Renee and Cody, my daughter's boyfriend, were with us. Cody is a part of our family. He's, he's just like one of our own children. None of them, including Ken Pierce, were experienced hikers. Some of the trails are rough. And we started up one, and it started to get pretty steep. I gotta be careful. It was a little more treacherous than what I wanted to challenge myself with. And so my youngest daughter and I decided to go back and get lunch ready. We kept hiking, and the higher we got and the farther we hiked, it got steeper and a little more scarier. I started whining and wanted to go back down. But Cody wanted to continue on ahead. Let's go to the top. And he just kept saying, oh, it's not fair if you try to make me go back to down top. if I want to go up. Cody, I'm out and right so now. I said, okay, fine, go on ahead. We'll be waiting at the truck for you. I just really felt like something bad was going to happen. I, I could just feel that Cody was not going to be safe going on alone. But I never could talk him into going back down with us. Hi. What's happening, baby? Not much. Renee was very angry at Cody because he had decided to go on and she was frightened for him. I told him to be careful. I hope he is. We were looking up on the falls, looking for Cody, and we thought we spotted him a few times. But it ended up not being him. I'm gonna go to the lodge. I'll be back later. Okay. okay. I left and went to use the restroom because by this time I was calmed down. Right up there. You remember what he's wearing, Erica? Yeah. There he is, right up there. Where? Right up there in that chute, baby. Oh, what's Off to the right hand side, you see it? I'm going to get help. Oh, my God. Tracy Robbins Byer was hiking with her brothers when she saw Cody fall. It was a devastating thing to watch. I don't know how anybody could survive a fall like that. You feel like grove of trees over there. When I saw Cody fall, I just wish that I could be there to save him. I just couldn't believe that I was standing there watching him fall and I couldn't be there to help him. Did you see that guy fall? And I said, no, where? And he pointed out where he fell from. And I knew, I had gut instinct right then that it was Cody. I just knew it was Cody. Hey, I think that was Cody to help. Come on. It looked like he had falling maybe 150 feet, maybe 200. And the way he fell in the length, he, I just took it that he was dead. A Utah County volunteer search and rescue team was called in, including EMT, Corey Child. I could see where people were pointing was directly under the tram ride. It appeared to be a 200 foot fall. Time is always of the essence in a rescue. A couple things go through my mind. 
How are we going to get to him? What's the time delay going to be? Is he going to be alive when I get there? Going into the base of the upper ball. The majority of the search and rescue team plan to hike in with the heavy equipment from below, while Corey and his team tried another route. I decided that I would rappel out of the tram directly above where the patient was lying. I thought that was the fastest way to him. Beaters, everybody put down. I am scared that it's going to be a dead person and going to simply be a body recovery. 501 copy. Okay, we have a rescue team in the tram now. And they're... I honestly thought he was dead. I was so scared. I was trying to talk myself into believing that he wasn't, but from the distance he fell, I honestly believed that nobody could make it. I would have missed him always being there for me whenever I needed him. Cody is my best friend. When do you want to start throwing it out, Corey? Not until I get in position. Slow it down. I had radio contact with the tram operator. I tried to keep a good eye below me to see what was going on. I could see where the victim was. Slow it down. The tram Slow operator down. slowed me to a stop down. right above the victim. We threw the 300-foot rope out the door and watched it hit the ground. And so I knew that I had enough rope. Something happens as soon as you go out the door, you think, I'm two feet from the tram, and I'm 298 feet from the ground. Which way do I want to go here? Okay. It's a gut wrencher. Okay, there you go. As I'm repelling, I'm thinking, what am I going to find when I get to the ground? That'll be all right, then. Thoughts of contacting his folks on the phone were running through my mind. What was I going to tell him? Why did I take him up there? Why did I let him go? And it, it was hard. Just hang on with it. When I first got to the victim, I could see two bystanders. I was amazed that he was alive. Okay, I want you to keep holding this up. Where do you hurt the most? And just about everywhere I touched, Your hip? he would moan. Any patient that I'm working on, I continually think, when's he going to crash on me? Crashing meaning when are his vital signs going to drop? When is he going to die on me? He had fallen 200 feet. His injuries, unknown to me on the inside, could have put him down in a matter of minutes. Nineteen-year-old Cody McQuillan was transported by helicopter to Utah Valley Regional Medical Center. Amazingly, the only major injury he had suffered was a fractured pelvis. And I asked him if I could hug him, and he said yes. And I said, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that you are all right. Cody's mother, Linda McQuillan, came to the hospital as soon as she was notified about the accident. It was very emotional. He instantly became my little boy. When he saw me, he started to cry, and I started to cry. I told him how thankful I was he was alive and how much I loved him, and that everything would be okay. Cody has completely recovered from his injuries. And I found out how far I'd fallen, but I think about how lucky I am. Lucky I'm not dead or in a wheelchair. Lucky that I'm alive. When I see Cody today playing baseball, climbing, doing the things he likes to do, I am 
just amazed that he's okay. I still would like to know to this day how somebody can fall that great of a distance and not be dead. My advice to anyone that's gonna hike, wear proper shoes, pay attention to trailhead signs, scope it out, learn what the difficulty of it is. And if you, if you don't think you can do it, don't do it. You can never be too safe. I'd just like to say to all the people that helped rescue Cody, how much I appreciate and thank them. It's just amazing that he's okay and and I think about that almost every day.